This is an SAT question, so know that there will be some word kind of problems on there. <clears throat> so these biologists found a new species of shrimp um, at a vent. So what's a vent? What's a vent in the ocean? Like what is it venting? This is a side note, right? It's not important for the math, but where is it coming from? Yeah, like a volcanic vent, right? Anyway, it says 3.1 miles, and we're, we're supposed to convert this to kilometers. So, and it tells us this conversion factor of 0.6214 per mile, um, per kilometer, I mean. So the easiest way to do these is to set up a proportion, and you can, so 0.6214 to 1, and it's good to label if you're, any, if there's any doubt what you're talking about. So miles to kilometers. And then over here, we'll put 3.1 miles and X kilometers. So, by the way, this is all over nursing. Just so you know. Um, anybody dosing medicine uses a ton of proportional reasoning. So it's really important to know. <clears throat> so how do you solve one of these? once you set it up. You guys remember how to solve a proportion? So it's really easy. You just multiply diagonally and set those equal and solve. So 0.6214x equals 3.1 in this case. And then how do you solve that to get x by itself? Just divide, right? It says times x, so just divide. So 3.1 divided by 0.6214, and remember you'll have a calculator for the whole test, so this won't be a big deal. So 4.99, or 5 miles. Cool. How many of you got that? Um, so I want you to keep this little idea of setting up these each one of these is called a ratio, but when we set them equal, it's called a proportion. But keep that strategy in mind, because there is actually a lot of proportional reasoning just in everyday life. Um, running a household, basic jobs, those kind of things. Yeah. Um, for the <coughs> SAT, SAT uh, if we don't show our work, does that work for us or no? No, because this, remember this year it's going to be on a computer. So, not all of the questions are multiple choice. You will have to enter answers, but you won't never show work. You won't ever show work. Yeah. But it's good for you, right? So here's the thing. I, I think why you're asking is because you probably didn't show work and still got five. Is that right? Yeah, because I know what miles <clears throat> Yeah, because you're a runner. Yeah. So, he's asking, like, what if you can get to the answer and you're sure, not guessing or playing around on your calculator. If you can get to the answer without writing it down, is that okay? Yes. It, maybe it will save you time to do it that way, but again, you need to be sure of it. Cool. So, yesterday, I kind of want to do another one of these someday. I think we'll, the proportional reasoning kind, for your benefit, maybe we'll do like a medication dose thing or something. Do you think that would be fun? Yeah. <clears throat> okay. Yesterday we were doing, uh, we just got into, just barely got into multiplication, and we had finished up our focus on reduced radical form. We do still do reduced radical form as part of multiplying, so it's not like that's going away, but let's do you guys remember this? Or actually, can you just find it in your notes? Get that out. Also get your pink sheet so we can write some multiplication notes down.
the way we're going to write these is uh, we'll, we'll say, let's just write the title right now. By the way, I like it when the lights are off because all my colors up here are very rich. <clears throat> yeah, they look better when the lights are low. So it's nice. This is a win-win. Plus I, don't, I, plus I can't see Noah as good, so I really like that. Yeah. Come on up and grab some. So basically we're going to do two different versions. There's a basic version like we did yesterday. And that was for when we have the same index. And then we have a quite a bit more complicated version when they're not the same. So we'll look at that next. Before we write the steps, let's go kind of review what we did. And so but we'll use that to get back into our process. And we did two examples yesterday. Basically, once you identify that the index is the same, you can just multiply what's underneath and go ahead and do the reduced radical form from there. So yesterday, you notice we had 16 times 8 underneath. And I told you you could do that two ways. You could multiply those and get 128 and then prime factor, or if you happen to know that 16 is 2 to the 4th and 8 is 2 to the 3rd, it's better to leave it that way, because it's already prime factored that, uh, in that case. Either way, we get it to 2 to the 7th. You don't want to stop here. In fact, I think I'll write that. Don't stop just because you've done the multiplication. We can't stop because it's not simplified. It's not reduced radical form. So once you get to that, remember we're pulling groups of five in this case, five twos. So this two out front represents two to the first or one group of twos. And then we have the two left over inside. Okay. Then we did one with letters a little bit. So again, the... The index is the same. The five didn't have a didn't really play a role, really in the whole problem until the very end. Uh, here's because they were same index. We multiplied all this stuff in here, and so a to the third times a. We add those exponents. B to the fifth times b. Add those exponents, and then we did the reduced radical form or jailbreak from there. So how many groups of two came out of each thing? Okay. And that's kind of, those basic ones, that's really all you do. So, here's our steps, if you want to even call them that. Make sure you're writing it underneath same. You need to check that first. So, if the index is the same. And so then we just say multiply the radicands. What's a radicand? Remember? Huh? huh? No. Nope. That's what's underneath the radical. So the radicand is what's underneath the radical. Okay? So we just multiply those, but we're going to say. But, try to use prime factors if possible. So let's use our example that we just reviewed um, to show what I mean by this. So use 2 to the 4th times 2 to the 3rd instead of 16 times 8. Okay. 
next step we'll just say follow the steps for reduced come on board reduced radical <coughs> so we wrote those yesterday and they for me they're just right above these on the previous page so once you've done the multiplication you just do the reduced radical form which sometimes is the most that's like more of the work than the multiplying actually a lot of times that's true So do you want to do another example of a basic one together before we jump into the deeper ones? Yeah? Okay. Let's make sure everybody gets on board with the writing. So if you want to write this as an example now. Not, not, on, not on the note sheet, yeah. I'm trying to think of a good, um, good version. you were talking about the other day you know, that you needed new glasses. I can see you know I need to go <laughs> If you take them off, I just disappear. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so we do have the same index. Make sure you check, it, and then we'll talk next, what if we do, what do we do if we don't. Okay, and then we do 20 times 4, and then A to the 5th times A, B to the 3rd times B to the 7th. Okay. Oh, well then why would you tell me to do another one? I told you. Mm. All right, cube root of 80. What do we do with exponents when we're multiplying bases? What do we do with exponents when we multiply base? We add them. So this is a to the 6th, b to the 10th. So the multiplication is done, but it's not, the problem is not done because we need to do this in reduced radical form. So what does that look like? Yep, so we need to get 80, and we've done 80 before, but let's remind you, so 2 times 40, which is 2 times 20, which is 2 times 10, which is 2 times 5. So this, so 80 can be rewritten as 2 to the 4th times 5. And yes, yeah, so now now we're jailbreaking. What can be pulled out? Um, 
one group of two, good. And then leave one, two inside. No groups of five, so just leave the five in there. How about A? How many groups can we pull out of A? Um, two. two groups, so two A squared. No groups left over. And then how about B? Three, Three groups of B and one B left over. Okay, so 2A squared B cubed, cube root of 10B. So to finish, we multiply the 2 and the 5. And then we also need to still check if we need absolute value. So what do you think on that? How come? Yeah, the original root was odd. Yeah. Good. So basic ones, well, same index, hopefully those won't give you too much trouble. Most of our work will be focused on, on different index, so are we ready to try that? Um, are we ready to try that? Yes. Okay. I know you're trying to say if you have to, then... Can I go to the next slide? Okay. So, if you can see that, go ahead and write it down. And leave yourself some room to write some explanation next to it. So, guys, the process for this is, it's a lot different. So, try to take good notes and definitely stop me if you have a question. We cannot multiply the radicands now because the, the two indices are not the same. In other words, we can't turn this into a 16x squared. So, our first step is to rewrite in exponent form. I'm really hoping that you have this memorized by now. So how can I write the sixth root of 8x in exponent form? In other words, what is the exponent that's the same as the sixth root? Yeah, so I hear some of you are flipping your notes. It's this note. It's, it should be either on the front page or close to it. This note on connecting the exponent to the radical. We're here, right, technically. So it's the nth root of something. And we wrote this little note. The denominator is the root. So we can go backwards. The root is the denominator, right? That goes both ways. And also you can see that here. Like this n in our radical became n underneath. It became the denominator in our rational exponent. So we can rewrite 8x as uh, the sixth root of 8x as what? to the yeah thank you to the one six now be careful you've got to use parentheses because look what happens if we take them off what does that say yeah it's only x to the one six and it needs to be both things because it was up here both things to the one six so make sure that you keep your parentheses almost till the very end of this process Okay, this other one is to the one-third. Next. 
we're going to get a common denominator, common denominator for the exponents. What's a good common denominator for one-sixth and one-third? Six, right? They both would work with six. So one-third, the, the one-sixth is fine. The one-third needs to be made into six. So that becomes two-sixths. So rewrite. The first one didn't change at all. So just leave it for now. But the second one became 2x to the 2 6. So we made it have a common denominator with the other exponent. OK, next step. We want this exponent to exactly match this one. So that we want the 2 6 to look like a 1 6. Okay? So do you remember the power to a power rule says multiply powers, right? Well, that means I can move this 2 in here with this 2x, and then it'll be the same. The two exponents will. So this keep writing this one. It hasn't done anything for a while. 2x squared to the 1 6. So now they both have a sixth power. All I did was move the numerator in with our base. That's all. You still need parentheses around that 2x. Like I said, you need parentheses around that for a long time. So again, we moved the 2 numerator, the squared, in onto the base. So we could have a 1 sixth power on the outside on both of them. Okay. I guess we could say move numerator in. Okay, from here, we're going to make big parentheses and combine the two things inside into that one parenthesis. So we can put 8x times still the 2x in parentheses, 2x squared. So what, what did we just do? Like, what did that accomplish, do you think? Okay, so yeah, it took it off the 8x. Do you see how that's going to allow us to multiply this stuff now? Finally, like we haven't multiplied anything, and finally we're going to be able to multiply it. Because they're both under the umbrella of 1 6. Before we couldn't do that. So, create big group and bring bases in. So we brought our bases in there. Okay, now we can finally multiply inside. And to do that, we need to take care of the squared first. What is 2x squared? So 2 squared x squared, right? It's 4x squared. 2 squared x squared. And then we multiply, as usual, inside. What is 8x times 4x squared? Awesome, 32x cubed. Um, out here, if you're doing these side notes, say multiply inside. Correct? <coughs> Because it's 2 squared x squared. So 4x squared. And then you still square it down there? Hmm? You still square it in the second step? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Right there again. So you still square it. Still square it? I only squared it once. Well, you keep it squared. Yeah, because what is 2x times 2x? Oh, okay.
it's good to have this. So good job for asking. Does that help? Okay, sorry. All right, so here we switch back to radical form to finish up. So how can I rewrite this back in radical form? Well, how do you write a one-sixth power as a radical? Okay, so really, you really need to study that note, because it's a big deal. It's this, right? Sixth root. So the denominator becomes the index. Denominator becomes the index. Okay? No, we're not done. Well, in this case, we're done. But not in a lot of cases. Okay. Why do I say that? Like, why is this case done, but not, maybe not always? Yeah, like, can I pull any six groups of six out of 32 or x cubed? No. 32 is 2 to the fifth. So I can't pull any groups of 6 out. Can't pull any groups of 6. Same with the x cubed. So that's the end for this problem. But if this had been 64, then we could pull out a group of 2. Or if this had been x to the 7th, I could pull out a group of x, 6 x's. So there will be work to do on a lot of these. In this case, we're done. Yeah. When, so when the, you're transforming it back to radic, reduced like radical form, that where the six goes on the, technically kind of like the outside, does that one, like, what does one it does just disappear? Yeah, because it would be like this. If you look at that note, we have two options. It could be the sixth root of 32x cubed, whole thing to the first, which doesn't matter. Or it could be 6 root of 32x cubed to the first, which also doesn't matter. Yeah. Okay, what do you think? You'll get good at it. it. It will be faster when you don't have to talk through everything. Are we going to practice it? Of course, yeah. Do you want to do notes first or another example first? Notes. Um, so she's asking, where did this power of five come from? So here on this step, if you don't know the third, like the factoring for thirty-two, you would just do the, do this. So one, two, three, four, five. Yeah. Okay, so are we doing notes or another one? Okay. So let's write these on the other side of that other multiplication note. Tell when you're right from the side sometimes. We'll kind of write through an example so it's easier to see what's going on that way, I think. Step one, rewrite in rational exponent 
form. So this is going to be, oh, but before I do that, please, please write this. So use parentheses around the radicand. So that's going to be 10x to the one-third times 20x to the one-fourth. <clears throat> Step two. Get a common denominator for the exponents. So that's going to be 10x to the 2. Well, actually, hold on, we have to go to 12 on this one. To the 4 twelfths times 20x to the 3 twelfths. <coughs> Bring the bases inside big parentheses with their numerators. So bring the numerators along with them is the idea there. Because if you copied exactly what I wrote, this x should still be on that 10. Yeah, I just forgot to write it. Why not? Embarrassing if you're wrong. Yes. It's okay to be wrong. I'm just changing the color of those. I think. parentheses around the bases. And then next step, multiply inside. So 100, or sorry, 10 to the 4th is 10,000 x to the 4th, 20 to the 3rd, I don't know what that is.
can continue to multiply. So this step, sometimes you have to do more than one thing. <clears throat> so we get that x to the seven. seven. How many zeros do you? Yeah, it should be six zeros. Well, because it's 4 plus 3. Yeah. Anyway, last step, which it could be multiple steps, but the last thing we're going to write is follow the steps for reduced radical form. And I'm not going to do that for this example because that's not the point. But yeah, there you go. Let's see if I can extend this down. Oh. <laughs> Shall we do another example together? Do you want to try one? I think we should do another one probably. Okay. Myself, but. What do you guys want to do? Yes. Probably, I bet we'll be able to get to our quiz by next Friday. Next Friday. Do what? You get the feeling Noah loves this guy. <clears throat> so he's pushing us to do something else. No, that's not it. What kind of route do you want to do this time? <clears throat> yeah, what kind of route? A fifth root times a what? A what? A third. Alright. What letter shall we use? You guys want to help me this up? A and B again? N. N? Z and X. Oh, N for Nevaeh. Z and X. No. How about N, Z, and X? Let's do all three. We're going N, Z, and X. That says Z to the 11. Yeah. Yeah. No, let's change that to a four. <laughs> to the four. Hey, how's that one look? N, Z, and X? It looks scary. So, I want you to have your pink notes so you can follow the steps and we'll talk through them, but I want you to put eyes on them, like read them as we do this. So, first thing is what? Rational exponent form. So, we need to put all this whole mess to the what power? One fifth. Good. Okay. Because if you're struggling on seeing that, this 
between now and Tuesday, I want you to go study this note. Like, memorize. Not just read it, but memorize it. Have it locked in. Here's why. Basically, we're here. N is the root. And then it becomes the denominator. Or, if you have this note, same thing. N is the root. It becomes the denominator. So really study that. Memorize. So the denominator is the root. Yes. The denominator is the root. <laughs> Good. No, it's good to have that realization. 2n cubed z x to the fourth to the what power? One third. One third. Good. Okay, common denominator. I shouldn't be telling you. What's next? Fifteen. Common denominator. So, we're going to rewrite this whole thing. And what's a good... She said fifteen, but how many fifteenths is a fifth? Three. So one fifth times three thirds is three fifteenths. Over here, one third times five fifths is five fifteenths. Do that off to the side if you feel like you struggle doing that in your head, and that's okay. Yeah, can you slow down? Okay. All right, so next, we have common denominators, so we need to bring the bases, which are the big parentheses, we need to bring those into <clears throat> even bigger parentheses, and with their numerators. So this is the 1 15th, and in here we have 20n to the 7th, z to the 11th, x to the 5th, to the third. So we bring it in to parentheses with the numerator. 2n cubed z x to the fourth to the fifth. Yeah. Yep. So <clears throat> she asked, so there's a 15 from both of them transferred to the outside. Yeah. I, we should write that maybe in our notes. The, leave the denominator on the out. Okay. <clears throat> let's pause here and go do that. So grab your pink note. Let's add on that third step, I think. Let's add the note to leave the... Leave the denominator outside. Is that helpful? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Till we switch it, till this step. Um, oh, shoot, I forgot to write that. Sorry, we forgot to write the step to switch back to radical form. So, so convert back to radical form and uh, follow. So we already wrote this part, the steps to <clears throat> reduced radical form. So anyway, simply I think you said it stays out there till that step. Yeah. Okay, so let's continue. So yes, we leave the denominator on the outside. Thanks for clarifying. Now we multiply. So your notes next step say multiply inside. And that could be a couple steps, maybe. I don't know. So we need 
to take each of the bases to the power, so 20 cubed, that was 8,000, and to the seventh to the third, what do we do with those exponents? We multiply them. Yeah. So n to the 21st, z to the 33rd, x to the 15th. How about on the other side? What's 2 to the 5th? Do you have that on memory yet? Um, 20, 20. <laughs> Not 10. <laughs> it's 32. Okay, so 2 to the 5th is 32. And to the 3rd to the 5th is what? 15th. Z to the 5th. And x to the 4th to the 5th, 20, all to the 15th, 1 15th. Then what? Yeah, we're still multiplying, we're still on that multiply step in your notes. How do you multiply with all these bases? What should we do with our exponents? Now we add them. Good. But let's do 8,000, excuse me, times 32. Uh, 8 times 32 is 256. So I think this is right. Okay, add the exponents for the ends. What do we get there? 21 plus 15, yep, 36. Add the z exponents, 38. Add the x exponents, 35. All to the 1 12th, that whole thing. 15, sorry, 1 15. He did. All right, all to the 115th. Now, that, now we're to the last, what we wrote as the last step in our notes, which is convert back to a radical and reduce that radical. So, you're probably not going to do a lot with these huge numbers, so we can talk about it, but what goes in here? What index goes in here? Yeah, 15. So the 15th root of this stuff so what size groups are we pulling out 15. groups of 15 good um, <clears throat> 256,000 I, I want to just double check that real quick so at least we have the correct number 8,000 times 32 good um, I'm sure we can pull out some twos out of that, I wonder. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, maybe not, ten, eleven, twelve, no. Nope. So 11, and then it's 5, 5, 5. So no, we're not going to be able to pull any groups out. Um, here's what I just did, and I don't expect you to do this on a test with no calculator, just so you know, but we can rewrite this as 2 to the 11th times 5 squared. Uh, sorry, 5 cubed. And so do you see how 11 and 3, there's not going to be any groups of 15 to pull out? Right? So... It's going to stay. So let's talk about N, Z, and X. How many groups can we pull out? Two. Two. Good. Two. 
So n squared with n to the 6 left inside, z squared with z to the 8th left inside, x squared with x to the 5th left inside. Do we need any absolute values? No. No. So there's your result.